Access your free language gifts of the month right now. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the Being Funny Conversation Cheat Sheet. Want to be able to tell jokes in your target language or tell someone how funny or unfunny they are? You will with this brand new cheat sheet. Second, all the language you need for everyday life. Get all of our best conversation cheat sheets rolled up into one with this gift. Download it right now before it disappears. Third, must know book vocabulary. If you love reading and want to talk about books, then this next one minute lesson is for you. Fourth, Phrases to use with the doctor. Learn how to say phrases like, I have an appointment, I don't feel well, and much more. Fifth, summer plans conversation lesson. Can you talk about your summer plans? Such as, go travel, relax at the beach, or stay at home and sit on the internet. You will with this one minute lesson. Access it right now. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to any device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 31% off premium or premium plus with the pretty big deal sale. So to get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Ni hao. Hello? Ni hao. Ni hao. Hello? Di si yu ren jian mian shi, wo xi huan shuo, ni hao. When I first meet someone, I like to say, Hello? Di yi si yu ren. 见面时，我喜欢说“你好”。不好意思 ，Excuse me。不好意思，不好意思 ，Excuse me。不好意思，我过一下。Excuse me， may I pass？ 不好意思，我过一下。对不起 ，I'm sorry。对不起，对不起 ，I'm sorry。我让你生气了，对不起。I made you angry. I'm sorry. 我让你生气了，对不起。晚安 ，Good night。晚安，晚安 ，Good night。我先走了，晚安。I'll go now. Good night。我先走了，晚安。很高兴见到你。Nice to meet you. 很高兴见到你。很高兴见到你。Nice to meet you. 你好，皮特。我叫瑞秋德。很高兴见到你。Hello, Peter. My name is Richard, and it is nice to meet you. 你好，皮特。我叫瑞秋德。很高兴见到你。你好吗 ？How are you？ 你好吗？你好吗 ？How are you？ 好久不见，你好吗 ？It's been a long time. How are you？ 好久不见，你好吗？是的 ，Yes。是的。是的 ，Yes。是的 ，Mike。Yes, Mikey。是的 ，Mike。
不 ，no， 不，不 ，no， 不的手势 ，no sign， 不的手势，谢谢 ，thank you， 谢谢。谢谢 ，Thank you。谢谢你，但 Thank you, but 谢谢你，但我叫 I'm 我叫我叫 I'm。我叫王国义。I'm 王国义。我叫王国义。再见。Goodbye。再见。再见。Goodbye。再见，我会想你的。Goodbye, I miss you。再。见，我会想你的。坏 ，bad， 坏，坏 ，bad。那个男人很坏。The man is bad。那个男人很坏。好 ，good。好，好 ，good。蔬菜对你的身体好。Vegetables are good for you。蔬菜对你的身体好。漂亮 ，pretty。漂亮，漂亮。Pretty， 这个帽子很漂亮。This hat is very pretty。这个帽子很漂亮。丑 ，ugly， 丑，丑 ，ugly， 丑陋的脸。Ugly face。丑陋的脸，简单 ，easy， 简单，简单 ，easy， 简单的问题 ，easy problem， 简单的问题，难 ，difficult。难，难 ，difficult， 难题 ，difficult problem， 难题，近 ，near， 近，近 ，near， 我住在大学附近。I live near the university. 我住在大学附近。远 ，far。远，远 ，far。车站离这里很远。The station is far from here. 车站离这里很远。小。Small, 小，小 ，small， 小鸡 ，small chick， 小鸡，今天 ，today， 今天，今天 ，today， 
她今天看起来很伤心。She looks really sad today. 她今天看起来很伤心。昨天 ，yesterday。昨天，昨天 ，yesterday。昨天上午 ，yesterday morning。昨天上午，明天 ，tomorrow， 明天，明天 ，tomorrow， 明天十点十分 ，tomorrow at ten ten， 明天十点十分，周。Week, 周，周 ，week， 一周七天 ，seven days a week， 一周七天，年 ，year， 年，年 ，year。一年 ，one year， 一年，秒 ，second， 秒，秒 ，second， 下一秒 ，the next second， 下一秒，分钟 ，minute。分钟，分钟 ，minute， 三分钟 ，three minutes， 三分钟，小时 ，hour， 小时，小时 ，hour， 还有一个小时。An hour away. 还有一个小时。钟 clock. 钟钟 clock. 设置闹钟。Set an alarm clock. 设置。闹钟，点 ，a clock， 点，点 ，a clock， 三点 ，three o'clock， 三点，日历 ，calendar， 日历。日历 ，calendar， 更新日历 ，update the calendar， 更新日历，星期一 ，Monday， 星期一，星期一 ，Monday， 工作周。从星期一开始 ，the work week starts on Monday。工作周从星期一开始。星期二 ，Tuesday。星期二，星期二 ，Tuesday。星期二，一月一号 ，Tuesday, January first. 星期二，一月一号，星期三 ，Wednesday. 星期三，星期三 ，Wednesday. 十八号，星期三 ，Wednesday. 
，the eighteenth， 十八号，星期三，星期四 ，Thursday， 星期四，星期四 ，Thursday， 在星期四 ，on Thursday， 在。星期四，星期五 ，Friday。星期五，星期五 ，Friday。谢天谢地，今天星期五。Thank God it's Friday。谢天谢地，今天星期五。星期六。Saturday, 星期六，星期六 ，Saturday， 星期六晚上 ，Saturday night， 星期六晚上，星期天 ，Sunday， 星期天，星期天。Sunday， 星期天是父亲节。Sunday is Father's Day。星期天是父亲节。做 ，do， 做，做 ，do， 全部都做。To do it all。全部都做，去 ，go， 去，去 ，go， 没有地方可去 ，nowhere to go， 没有地方可去，笑 ，laugh。笑，笑 ，laugh， 笑得停不下来。Can't stop laughing， 笑得停不下来。好吃 ，delicious， 好吃，好吃 ，delicious， 好吃的甜点。Delicious desserts, 好吃的甜点。水 water, 水水 water, 一杯水。A glass of water, 一杯水。茶 tea. 茶，茶 ，tea， 一杯茶。A cup of tea， 一杯茶。咖啡 ，coffee， 咖啡，咖啡 ，coffee， 一杯咖啡。A cup of coffee。一杯咖啡，啤酒 ，beer， 啤酒，啤酒 ，beer， 一听啤酒 ，a can of beer， 一听啤酒，葡萄酒 ，wine， 葡萄酒。葡萄酒 ，wine， 一杯葡萄酒 ，a glass of wine， 一杯葡萄酒，牛肉 ，beef， 牛肉，牛肉 ，beef， 水煮牛肉。Stewed spicy beef 
in oil. 水煮牛肉鸡 chicken 鸡鸡 chicken 鸡汤 chicken soup 鸡汤猪肉 pork 猪肉猪肉 pork 烤猪肉 pork roast 烤猪肉鱼 fish 鱼鱼 fish 咸水鱼 salt water fish 咸水鱼羊肉 lamb 羊肉，羊肉 ，lamb， 羊肉串 ，lamb skewer， 羊肉串，医生 ，doctor， 医生，医生 ，doctor， 医生正在量。病人的脉搏。The doctor is taking the patient's pulse. 医生正在量病人的脉搏。警察。Police officer. 警察。警察。Police officer. 穿着制服的警察。Police officer in uniform. 穿着制服的警察，老师 ，teacher， 老师，老师 ，teacher， 英语老师 ，English teacher， 英语老师，员工。Employee, 员工，员工 ，employee， 员工福利 ，employee benefits， 员工福利，来 ，come， 来，来 ，come。跟我来 ，Come with me. 跟我来，看 ，see， 看，看 ，see， 看日落 ，see a sunset， 看日落，做 ，make。做，做 ，make， 做吃的 ，make food， 做吃的，用 ，use， 用，用 ，use， 用筷子 ，use chopsticks。用筷子，能看，能能看，我能吃辣。I can eat spicy food. 我能吃辣。零 ，zero， 零。零 ，zero， 从零开始。Start from zero， 从零开始。一 ，one， 一，一 ，one， 一度 ，one degree， 一度。
二。Two. 二。二。Two. 二是我最喜欢的数字。The number two is my favorite number. 二是我最喜欢的数字。三。Three. 三。三。Three. 现在是三点钟。It is three o'clock now. 现在。是三点钟。四 ，four， 四，四 ，four， 四个人 ，four people， 四个人，五 ，five， 五，五 ，five。五个苹果 ，five apples， 五个苹果，六 ，six， 六，六 ，six， 六件东西 ，six things， 六件东西，七 ，seven。七，七 ，seven， 一周七天 ，seven days a week， 一周七天，八 ，eight， 八，八 ，eight， 蜘蛛有八条腿 ，a spider。Has eight legs. 蜘蛛有八条腿。九 nine 九九 nine 九层楼 nine floors 九层楼十 ten. 十，十 ，ten， 十点半 ，half past ten， 十点半，推销员 ，salesman， 推销员，推销员 ，salesman， 汽车推销员 ，car salesman。汽车推销员，经理 ，manager， 经理，经理 ，manager， 部门经理 ，department manager， 部门经理，厨师 ，cook， 厨师，厨。师 ，cook。他是一个四星级饭店的厨师。She is a cook at a four-star restaurant. 他是一个四星级饭店的厨师。工程师 ，engineer。工程师，工程师 ，engineer。我是一个工程师。I am an engineer. 我是一个工程师。程序员 ，programmer。程序员，程序员 ，programmer。我是一名程序员。I am a programmer. 我是。一名程序员，护士 ，nurse， 护士，护士 ，nurse。这个女人是一名护士。The woman 
is a nurse. 这个女人是一名护士。身体 body， 身体，身体 body， 身体和灵魂。body and soul， 身体和灵魂。头 ，head， 头，头 ，head， 戴上头盔，保护头部。Wear a helmet to protect your head. 戴上头盔，保护头部。Hey everyone! Welcome to the monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So, click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is the power of mistakes. Have you ever made a mistake in your target language while talking with a native speaker? Maybe you said the wrong word. Maybe you misconjugated a verb. When you make a mistake, you usually don't forget about it, right? Well, that's the power of mistakes. And in today's episode, you're going to find out why making mistakes is crucial to learning a language. Do you know the most common adverbs of frequency? You will with this one-minute lesson. Learn how to say rarely, always, often, sometimes, and much more in your target language. Fourth, must-know summer clothes vocab. Do you know how to say T-shirt or shorts in your target language? If you don't, you can learn how. This one-minute lesson will give you all the words you need for summer clothing. Fifth, the top 50 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you 50 must-know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. Okay, today's topic is how remembering your mistakes can help you learn faster. First, take a moment and think of a time when you made a mistake. Maybe you were at work. Maybe you were at school. Maybe you were shopping or in another public place. We can all probably clearly remember many mistakes we've made. We also remember the reactions of the people around us. Some people are understanding. Some people aren't so understanding. But why do we remember these situations so clearly? Psychologically speaking, negative things tend to impact us more than positive things. For example, if we're asked to choose between gaining friends or gaining money, and losing friends or losing money, we'll choose not to lose friends or lose money, not to gain. This is called loss aversion. We tend to avoid losing more than we work on gaining. We spend time thinking about our negative past experiences to avoid them in the future. Because of this, negative events like making mistakes. Stay in our minds for a very long time, and this happens in language learning. If you make a language mistake while chatting with a native speaker, it'll probably be hard to forget. Yes, it's true that when we're learning another language, we don't always know when we've made a mistake. But when we realize we've used the wrong word, used grammar incorrectly, spelled something wrong or similar, we tend to remember the situation vividly. In some languages, just a tiny change in pronunciation, tone, or writing could make a big difference. So mistakes are a big source of worry for many learners. But the fact that mistakes are very hard for us to forget can be a powerful tool when learning a language. We want to avoid the feeling of embarrassment that comes after a mistake, so we work hard to correct ourselves. Past mistakes can motivate us to try harder. We can use our mistakes as a tool in our language learning. But we can't make these emotionally powerful mistakes by reading a textbook or even by taking a lesson with a teacher. The only way you can make these mistakes is by speaking in real conversations and messing up. So, what can you take away from this? Let's jump into the second part: how to use mistakes in your language learning. We can give advice like "go ahead and make mistakes," but that's easier said than done. Here are three tips to help you make the most of your mistakes. One. Speak in your target language as much as possible. Why? Because part of the learning process is making mistakes. Accept that mistakes are going to happen. If you're not making any mistakes ever, then you're probably not challenging yourself. Two, look for opportunities to speak. 
many learners have trouble finding public places to practice the language they're studying. See if there are language groups in your community or at your school. If you have trouble with that, look online and be creative. You don't need to search for groups specifically for language learners. See if you can find a hobby discussion in your target language. Maybe you'll find a news discussion group. Think outside the box. Find somewhere to practice and make mistakes. When you do mess up, you'll probably remember it. Three, build on your experiences. Think carefully about your conversations after you have them and work to make them longer each time. If you made a mistake in your first conversation, think about how to fix it. If you said only a few sentences in your first discussion, work to speak for 15 or 30 seconds on the next discussion. Challenge yourself. Many learners have trouble finding opportunities to speak that work with their schedule and their level. If you're not sure where else you can practice, you can consider hiring a tutor. If you're a Premium Plus member on our website, you can practice with your teacher. It's still important, where possible, to practice and make mistakes in real life situations. This will help you to more carefully reflect on your conversations and work to improve. It isn't quite the same as studying with a textbook or a hired tutor. This strong desire to avoid making a mistake will help you work to improve. You'll be motivated to try harder. This can help you learn faster. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. So you decided to learn a new language. At first, the idea seemed exciting. You bought a phrase book, dictionary, and a subscription to an online class, ready to dive headfirst into the language. For the first day or two, all was well. You gained ground quickly, learning a few basic phrases and words. A week before, learning that language was just a dream, but now you're actually doing it. Then, the third and fourth day roll around. The excitement is wearing off. You encouraged yourself to continue, and another week or two goes by, but with a lot less progress. Suddenly, learning a new language doesn't fill you with excitement anymore. Now it feels more like dread. Sometimes it feels like you're drowning in grammatical cases, verb conjugations, and wonky pronunciation. It all seems too much to handle, so you start to think about giving up. But we encourage you not to give up. Learning a foreign language is difficult. We won't pretend like it isn't. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Sometimes you just need to take a step back, reevaluate your approach, and come back to the language with a different perspective. In this video, we'll look at four tips for when learning a new language feels overwhelming. Number one, set aside a designated study time. Consistency is key when learning a foreign language. Studying 15 minutes seven days a week will benefit you more than cramming in two hours one day a week. Set aside an amount of time that works best for you. If you can afford to spend an hour every day learning, that's awesome, go for it. But don't feel bad if you can't spend that much time. Even 10 or 15 minutes a day goes a long way. Breaking up your learning into manageable time segments will relieve a lot of the stress that can come with studying a new language. Learning is not a race. Go at your own pace and try not to compare your progress with anyone else's. Number two, take it one bite at a time. Now that you have your schedule under control, it's time to focus on what you'll actually be studying. It's recommended that every one to two weeks, you focus on learning a very specific piece of the language. It could be a conjugation group, a case, tense, or a collection of theme vocabulary. Whatever you choose, hone in on it and do your best to feel comfortable with it before you move on to something else. Ever heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? Focusing on one thing at a time helps you break the language into digestible chunks. Number three. Expose yourself to the language in different ways. Don't just sit around reading about grammar all day. Obviously, knowledge of grammar is important, but you want to spice up your practice as much as possible. In addition to grammatical study, try to mix in a combination of reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Try to practice reading by either translating a simple article into your native language, or maybe if you're a beginner, pick up a children's book in your target language. For writing, you can try to write out a fictional conversation between you and yourself, even. Use the phrases you know to create a mock conversation, and don't use any words you can't think of or you don't remember. To practice speaking, you can find native speakers locally at a language club or at a meetup. You can also find them online in a language exchange. For listening, a great podcast should do the trick. Spread out each type of practice listening, reading, speaking, and writing across your regular language study schedule. This will give you a balanced experience in the language and should help keep things interesting. 
This method also works well when you use it to focus on a single aspect of the language like we talked about above. Number four, set mini goals, not just big ones. If your only language learning goal is to be fluent, you're likely setting yourself up for disappointment. While speaking fluently can be your ultimate goal, it shouldn't be your only one. Try to set mini goals month by month and week by week. It could be something simple. Learn 20 new verbs, practice a new case, or speak with three native speakers. As long as it's specific and reasonable to achieve in a shorter amount of time, it should work fine. Not having mini goals alongside your ultimate goal is a lot like sprinting across a huge open field. There's no reference point, so for much of the time, it feels like you're not any closer to your goal. It's not that you're not moving forward, it just feels like you're not. Without any trees or buildings to run past, it seems like you're running in place. Mini goals are like the trees and buildings of your language race. They help you see that you're moving forward and give you a sense of accomplishment. The desire for perfection can get in the way of your progress. Don't freak out when you struggle to speak or make a mistake. It's all a part of the learning process. Also, don't be afraid to speak, even if you know what you'll say won't be totally correct. It's better to do your best to communicate in the language and get it wrong than to never try at all. Learning a new language isn't always easy. In fact, oftentimes it's very hard. Don't let that discourage you though. Use these tips to help keep you focused yet unstress in your language learning. A little perseverance will go a long way. Before long, you'll be speaking better than you may have thought was possible. Reading in a foreign language is great, but a big challenge related to reading is that you often need a high level of fluency before it gets really fun. And if a book isn't fun, then you're not going to want to read it. The entire point of sitting down with a book is to enjoy it and have a good time being absorbed in the story or learning the information. And that's just not gonna happen if you need to look up every second word. It'll take you out of the story and it will feel like a chore, like an assignment from school where you have to read the book for a class. But there is a resource that you might not know about that can really help your skills, bilingual books. In this video, we'll look at how to supercharge your vocabulary with bilingual reading. This is a simple solution that will make reading, especially at the beginner levels, easier and fun. These are books that have your target language on the left page and your native language on the right. But how do you use it? Well, it's all in the name. You read a book in two languages at once, the language that you're learning plus the language that you're fluent in. There are a few different formats for bilingual books, but the most common one is the one previously mentioned. You have a book that has your foreign language on one side and your native language on the other. It's also possible to find stories that are presented bilingually, paragraph by paragraph. The principle is the same, but the information is just in more bite-sized chunks, so your eyes need to travel less to read both texts. The great thing about bilingual reading is that you can quickly switch between languages, and the translation is presented to you, so you don't need to try to distinguish between the 10 variants of a word that your dictionary offers, which brings us to the main advantage. Bilingual reading is great for building your initial vocabulary. When you first try reading in a new language, you'll probably find that you need a relatively high level of fluency before you can make a strong connection with the words on the page. Reading is a lot of fun if you already know about 80% of the words, as you can guess the meaning of another 15% from context and then look up the remaining few words you do not understand. But if you're starting out, you might know only 10% of the words. That's where bilingual reading can help a lot. Here's a way to use a bilingual book. Read a sentence first in your target language. See if you understand it. If you do, think about the meaning of some of the key words. Then, quickly glance on the other side of the page and check the translation. This way, you'll be able to have fun reading and learn contextual vocabulary at the same time. Let's look at why it works well if you're learning a language at home. If you're taking language classes, then your teacher sometimes supports you in a similar way to the translated page. When you're reading a text with your teacher, you can ask them questions whenever you do not understand something. They'll give you a translation quickly and can share other ways in which a word can be used. But if you're learning from home, you don't have that advantage. Bilingual reading offers the same benefits as you can quickly check the translation of a sentence and see what each word means. The main goal of bilingual books is to bridge the gap between the beginner and intermediate to more advanced levels. They can help set you up to read real books without any translations. Some language purists might recommend you read only stories that were originally written in your target language, but any book you enjoy is best to encourage your studies. 
use bilingual reading to improve your vocabulary and reading comprehension skills until you get so good that you don't need it anymore. It doesn't matter what language you're learning. Bilingual reading works for every language. The principles of language learning don't change, only the implementation does. You also don't really need too much knowledge at the start. If you like a real challenge, then you could even start reading some simple bilingual stories without any prior experience in a language. However, just as with other language programs and courses, the more people who speak a specific language, the easier it'll be to find bilingual books. Why is speaking the number one weakness for most language learners? Some time ago, we sent out a survey to find out a little more about you. We asked about what you like, what you don't like, your strengths and your weaknesses. One question asked you to rate your abilities in listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Over 70% of people surveyed answered that their biggest weakness is speaking. In this video, you'll find out why speaking is a common weakness. You'll also learn six ways you can start improving your speaking skills right now. This is a common issue for language learners. But why is speaking the number one weakness for most learners? It's pretty simple when you consider that you get better at what you focus on. You get better at what you focus on. When people start learning a language, they usually start with reading. Most learners start with textbooks. Learners taking their first class probably spend most of their time doing homework and reviewing information in their textbook, spending maybe only 30 minutes a week or so repeating words in class. If you spend most of your time reading, you'll get better at reading, but your speaking skills won't grow. It's like exercising just one muscle. That single muscle will get stronger, but the other ones, which are ignored, stay small. This is why speaking is such a common weakness for learners. If you want to improve your speaking skills, you need to spend more time speaking. Here are six ways you can start right now. Number one, get a native speaker tutor to practice with. A common issue is most people don't have access to teachers or native speakers, or they just don't have the time to meet with one. But with our Premium Plus plan, you get your very own on-site teacher. You can practice speaking by recording yourself and having them review it. One popular tactic is to talk about your day. To do this, send three recordings, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, and one at night. Your teacher will review your recordings and then give you corrections and feedback. Number two, get conversation-based lessons in the lesson library. If you visit your lesson library, you can sort lessons by conversation, reading, writing, vocab, grammar, or culture. So select conversations and you'll see the lessons that expose you to conversations and get you speaking the language. Number three, read out loud. While you're listening to a lesson and reading along with the notes, try reading out loud. Then reread and speed up your tempo. If you're reading out loud, you're practicing your speaking skills. And by increasing your speed, you'll also be able to talk faster and with confidence. Do this again and again until you can speak faster. Number four, prepare things to say ahead of time. Most learners, especially beginners, run out of things to say. But if you prepare lines ahead of time, you won't have to worry about this. Start speaking with prepared lines from our three minute video lessons, top 25 questions lessons, survival phrases lessons, and other lessons that you'll find in the lesson library. Number five, shadow conversations. This means you should repeat the dialogues as you hear them. In every lesson, you learn a new conversation. So try to shadow the conversation line by line. Premium and Premium Plus users use the dialogue tool with this method and you'll master conversations faster. Number six, review again and again. Regular review is essential to mastery. Many learners don't review. If you review and repeat lines again and again, you'll speak better, faster, and with more confidence. Great work, here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and eBooks for free. Just click the link in the description.